When I first meet with people who dream of writing a book and we have a conversation, one of the things I hear a lot is, well, I'm not really a writer. Or they'll say to me, you know, I have all these ideas, but I just don't really know how to get them down on paper because I'm not a professional writer. I haven't done a lot of writing. I'm just not a really good writer. And they judge themselves that way. Well, how do you become a writer in your own head as well as in the world? Hi, everybody. I'm Ricky Heller from rickyheller.com. I'm a book coach, a writer, and an editor. And I'm here to help you finally get that book written so you can share your message with the world and feel that amazing feeling of being a published author. So it really boils down to identity, in my, in my opinion. And as somebody who's been writing since I could hold a pencil, I automatically think of myself as a writer. I know this to my bones that I'm a writer, but not everybody feels that way. And maybe not everybody starts writing when they're a little kid, right? So for me, that's an automatic. And for other people I know, you know, there are just some people who as children know exactly what they want to be when they grow up, right? You know, you talk to some surgeon and he says, oh, I knew when I was a little kid that I was going to be a heart surgeon or whatever it is. I knew I was going to be a writer but that's not true for everyone. And people have these dreams. How can you then adopt that, that sense that you really are a writer? And so I wanna share with you what happened to me in a different realm, and I can show you how this works and what you can do yourself. Some of you know that I previously had a different business in between uh, getting my PhD in English, teaching English out of college. I took a stint during which I was a holistic nutritionist, I studied holistic nutrition, and I became a holistic nutritionist. And I coached women who were dealing with candida overgrowth, which is a condition I had. Now, why is this important? Well, when I first was uh, diagnosed, and I saw a professional naturopath who told me the diet I had to eat to clear the candida out of my body, first of all, I almost fainted. <laughs> I thought, there is no effing way on earth I can do that. You have to cut out all sugars, all gluten, all dairy, all red meats, all coffee, alcohol, processed foods, the list goes on and on, Not certain nuts, and so on and so on. So for two years, I was incredibly strict and didn't let a single grain of sugar pass through my lips. But then as soon as I was feeling better, I went back to eating the way I did before. It all came back and worse, and I had to start from scratch and do the whole thing over and that's when I studied nutrition and started helping people because I knew at that point I was never going to go back. And a few years ago, my sister got married and I remember she had a chocolate fountain, you know, one of those, uh, one of those sweet tables with a chocolate fountain pouring over. I've always wanted to eat a chocolate fountain, eat off of a chocolate fountain. And I went over to the table, I looked around at all these little cakes and cookies and brownies and truffles and the chocolate fountain with the sponge cakes and all the things. And I filled my plate with some strawberries, fresh strawberries and some pine fresh pineapple slices. And the woman who had been sitting beside me during the meal was beside me at the line there. And she looked at my plate and she said, oh my God, like, how do you do that? How do you not eat all this amazing stuff? And my answer was, I don't eat sugar. And I realized later that I had completely adopted that identity. I am a person who never eats refined sugar, never. And I haven't since 2009, and it's now 2024. And I don't even eat high glycemic sweeteners, like I won't have maple syrup, I won't have um, agave nectar, I won't have um, blackstrap molasses, anything that's really high on the glycemic index, I won't eat it because I am now someone who doesn't eat sugar. And I can tell you that having that identity now makes life easier. Because when I'm in a situation like the chocolate fountain, it's not a question of oh, maybe I'll just take a little bit, maybe I'll have a teeny taste. It's simply no, it's a yes, no, black, white kind of situation. And it's the same thing with any personal identity that you adopt. I had a friend in college who um, told me years later when she, she had quit smoking, she just told herself, I'm a non-smoker. I don't want, and every time anything to do with smoking came up, she reminded herself of that. I am not gonna have smelly clothes. 
I'm not going to sneak out in the middle of winter during a coffee break to go have a cigarette with other people. I'm a non-smoker. Non-smokers don't do those things until she believed it. She repeated it and repeated it until she believed it. And it's exactly the same with writing. Yes, of course you have to write to be a writer. You can't just sit and watch Netflix all night and tell yourself, I'm a writer, I'm a writer, and feel like a writer. But if you commit to your craft, you do the work, and you repeatedly remind yourself, I spent 15 minutes writing today. I'm a writer. I'm working on my book diligently. I am a writer. I am editing my first draft. That's what writers do. I'm a writer. I'm reading a lot. I'm a writer. I'm talking to other writers. I am a writer. And the more you do that, the more you're going to absorb that identity and believe it and start doing more writerly things. You know, in the beginning, I used to sit and yearn for chocolate. But over the years, I started doing things that someone who doesn't eat sugar does. I eat fewer processed foods. I eat more vegetables and fresh fruits. I do the things that someone who eats a healthful diet does. I've in been increasing my exercise lately, all those things. So if you want to feel like a writer, yes, of course you have to write, but you also have to remind yourself that you are a writer and you have to do it regularly, allow other people to do it if they call you a writer and just embrace that identity. So I hope that helps. If you don't feel like you're a writer today, that does not mean you won't feel like you're a writer in the future. And writing is what will get you there. If you want to start that process, if you've been dreaming about that book and you're just not sure how to begin, I have a great freebie for you. It's called My Top Three Tips to Find Your Book's Topic Today. And you can get it in the comments below. Just click more for the resources. It's a freebie. Click that link and you can sign up and get that right away. All right, writers, I will see you next time. Have a great week and see you soon.